Do you guys welcome Bob to the stage for me? I just, just take a moment, just share with us kind of your journey, how you got to celebrate, and the principle of first that you shared. Sure. First thing I need to make sure that everybody knows is that I'm not perfect at this guy. But I think it's about the faith thing. You know, it, it, I at least have a heart about it now instead of just, uh, yeah, I'll get it next time. But we started coming to celebrate on your kickoff. Um, that was a real answer to prayer. We originally came to celebrate because my daughter-in-law did not have a church home. Um, we were going to a church that we enjoyed a lot, but um, it was a little, it was bigger for her. So therefore we felt as a family that we needed to support her. And it was a really good decision for us. But to get back to what the topic is that we're talking about is last fall, when we were going through the, I believe the success series, uh, tithing comes up. I've always known to give, I was raised that way, um, I didn't know why I was giving you this game at church, right? but I, I had been through many, many different financial uh, programs. I, I've seen that this year, and they're, and they're they're really good with the Ramsey program to get it. But and I knew that, but I always forgot that very first step of that ten percent, because in my mind, if I take ten percent away from this, there wasn't enough to go with the other ninety percent. So I always did exactly what he talked about. I'm going to pay all this and then it's okay to give. I actually had a financial advisor tell me one time, God understands that. So I went through years of really, um, I believe that she felt that way because she was an accountant. But the reality was is that I, my accountant said no, that was the first percent, or the first the 10 percent. So I went home <coughs> after that, 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 that series and I thought, okay, we're we make money to meet our needs. We've, we've done okay in life and everything, but it's always on my mind. I mean, I'm, I'm obviously getting older. <laughs> I wanted to know about what's going to happen in the end. You know, my family has to play. I mean, I went through all those things, and finally I thought, no, I need to figure out what's going on today. Uh, we like to give. Anybody that knows my wife would give away everything if I didn't tie her up every now and then. But she, that's the way she is. So I knew that giving wasn't going to be a problem. But I didn't feel convicted. I felt convicted for Bob about that. So I made the decision. I spent some time and did some researching and thinking. Because there's a lot of uh, teachings out there we know that will say this day is still for today. Uh, it is. And um, ironically, one of the one of the uh, one of the research when it pulled up was, was Dr. Morris, and I thought, oh my gosh, he makes that so reality. So. And the other part was I read several times in scripture where if God says, test me on this. And I thought, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Yeah. So, so talk about that. Let, let's go from September till today. Okay. Talk about what, how, how, what have you seen? What's the difference, man? Okay. Again, I wanna emphasize that I have, I have jumped in and out, um, but I ha I'm convicted now. So I know that that's right. Um, there's a whole long story with this and I won't get into it, but the first um, really obvious sign to us was we were selling our home and we had a number in our head that we had to have. It wasn't that we were selling our home because we couldn't afford it. It was the fact that I just, we really felt it to, convicted to become debt free, which we had for years, but we've never taken the whole step. So we put our house on the market we thought we had this great house that we wanted, which, like I said, I won't get into that story, but that house would not sell. And our home in the area that we lived, they were selling very, very quickly as we got on the market. It would not sell until we left it off or go on the other home. And at the time, I was thinking, oh, great, now what are we going to do? You know, we've got this. So anyway, it was okay. Anyway, um, an offer came in on the house and it came in and it was not the number that we needed. We, we have this in our mind and remember, we're not selling the house because we have to, we're selling it for a goal. And I said to them, we can't take this. this. This does not meet our goal. So we made a counter offer. Um, and the realtor said to us, this gal is a cash buyer and she's not gonna negotiate with you. She's gonna come there, she's gonna lay the money on the table and she's gonna walk away. And I thought, okay, then we're not gonna sell. This, this is the number. 
she came back with a counter offer that when I first heard it, I thought, oh, that's not a good deal for me. But when I wrote down the numbers, she came back with a cash offer up front and then she gave us four months to live in the home with no rent or mortgage. And she would close that day. When you add those numbers up, it came to our number. So that's, it took me a couple days to go, oh, wow. That was probably an answer to prayer. Um, a home came along that was not where I thought we were going to live, but it, it, it fits our budget. And when I'm in that house now, I know it's the right place. So I know that was the first thing. But um, I think the thing that I really want to share is that I figured out that you don't give to get. You know, if, if I mean, that's, that's an investment. That's what you do with the 90% that's left over that God has given us to be good stewards of. There's a big difference between that. That 10% shouldn't even be in your, I mean, it's just not in there. And I figured that out. I work in, a, in an organization that talks about stewardship all the time. And when I stopped and thought about what does that mean? Well, what it is, it's there, I'm responsible for managing their money. And that's that's kind of where I got with, with I'm managing God's money in that part. So. Somebody's sitting here right now, and they were where you were in September, and they think, okay, what, what's holding me? I, I, I've got some pushback against that. What would you say to somebody who's hesitating right now? And that, go ahead and wrap that up. Well, first of all, I, was, I, I think about that if we have made the decision to follow Christ, we've, we have accepted, we, we obviously, the Spirit has moved in our heart enough to know that there must be something there or we wouldn't have moved in that direction. And I think that, in my, my opinion is, is that when you choose to follow Christ, you follow Him through <clears throat> all of His teachings. The, the scriptures, you don't get to pick and choose which ones work for you. And uh, I think a lot of us do that in life. But there are certain things in my life that I know we don't do as a Christian, and, and, and we're, we are very firm in that. But finances are kind of a personal, quiet little thing. Nobody really knows um, where the stuff is, but, but God knows. So when you choose to be a Christian, you choose to take all of those, that whole thing. Um, my other thing is that I would say to somebody is, if you're not sure, first of all, God says the test on it. I mean, and, and he keeps his promises, we know that. And then I would say, I did all of the other way because I knew best. I'll pay all these bills. And, uh, you know, I, I can hear this in my head, so how was that working for you? Okay. Um, it got us through, but I didn't ever feel complete. And I guess I really want to stress that the tithing is just the obedience. It's, it's, it's all of the peace that comes with it and all that stuff that... Um, it's, it's just truly really about obedience for everything after that. So I, I would say, what do you have to lose? 